Gotham Knights, the TV show, not the game that came out just a few months ago. I haven't seen anyone talk about this show yet, um, but I've definitely heard like discourse about it a while ago and it was like one trailer and one poster posted. As you can probably guess, not a soul was keen over this show. Now that it's finally out and since I actually watched the first episode, I can say that without a doubt, from the bottom of my heart, it's not that bad. I'll still be nitpicking the show and bashing it with every opportunity I get, just like everyone else online is going to do, but I actually want to give props when I can because, let's face it, our standards are low these days. Most shows are not worth watching and they're just so bad that you question why it was even fucking made. If this show can at least get one thing right, I'll give them a fucking award for it. So if you don't know the plot already, I'm obviously going to spoil it uh, just a little bit, I guess. But Gotham Knights is about Turner Hayes, which is Bruce Wayne's adopted son. The son is not Dick Grayson or, you know, Robin. Instead, Batman adopted a child and refused to reveal his identity to him as a way of protecting him. It's brought up in a bit of dialogue later on that he does this to protect his son and because he loves him. Turner's world is flipped upside down when he finds out that his father, Bruce Wayne, has been killed and that he is actually Batman. During the episode, he goes around raging in his overwhelming grief, whilst he's also trying to figure out more about his father's death. This leads him to the Batcave, where he finds some cool shit. Turner basically gets accused of the murder of his father. He gets arrested, which leads him to the rest of the supporting cast, who are also in jail for Bruce Wayne's murder. The episode ends with them all meeting Robin, who is not a son of Batman, uh, but is actually just this girl that Batman had found, and you know they work together, coincidentally. The team forms, and they figure out who the looming threat of the entire show will be, which is the Court of Owls. A pretty cool antagonist, which I think it makes sense for this show, but I literally know nothing about them. I just know that they're kind of ominous whenever they get brought up, like they seem pretty cool. That's the main plot of the episode, and I won't say it's bad because it's not that bad. This is a show that, from the first episode, depending if you're an optimist or not, you'll pay attention to either the good things or the bad things on each episode. And yeah, there's, there's both. Whilst there is good in this first episode, it could have easily gone through a few more hands before someone stopped them and said, hey, maybe we should put Bruce Wayne in this show because um, he doesn't have a single scene. We just see his dead body once. And perhaps the supporting cast should have had some better dialogue because it was very bad early on. There's a certain section I'll talk about later, but it was fucking abhorrent to hear. My top pet peeves of the show, number two is going to be the dialogue. Whilst number one is going to just be the mistakes and the obvious mistakes, the lack of character dynamic. Choosing not to build a relationship with Bruce and his son is its stupid. It's so dumb. I want to bring up another show that gives you time with both the parent and the child before one of them dies, and that way you feel actually connected to the protagonist. But I don't want to just spoil another show in this video. But just know this. You can't feel bad for the protagonist if you haven't seen the people that they've lost. We didn't actually meet Bruce. He didn't feel like a person. He was just, just a random guy. Let's go over some of the good parts of this show because for once, there's a cringy CW show with some good moments. To start off, the visuals are actually pretty good. Uh, the beginning, the first few minutes, it looks very weird. Obviously a cheaper show, obviously CW, but as it get, goes on, it gets better. Like it does that arrow thing, which is where you film at night. It's so much smarter to do that. Uh, I think, I don't really know too much about filming, but for the visuals, it's so much better when they filmed that night. And I'm pretty sure there was like a, a funeral scene that looked good. Like they had good scenes. It all mostly looked good. The combat that was uh, occasionally in the episode wasn't bad. Just some, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, punches and kicks. Can't go wrong with that. There is the topic of superhero suits that I want to touch on as well. Because I think there's, you know, there was the scene of Batman who was just wearing his Bruce Wayne outfit. And I'm pretty sure they put on the Batman mask when he died. I don't know. Like, if he actually died whilst wearing that mask and he put it on, then it's so dumb. Like, why was he wearing suit and tie and then just the bat cows? Doesn't make any sense. But then you had uh, Robin at the end who kind of was like a bat girl outfit. That kind of looked boring because, like, she just had goggles and her bare face. Like, I could fucking tell who that was without even... Like, how is that a disguise? I, I, I fucking know who you are immediately. You go to arrest me, I already fucking know who you are. So, it's stupid. But, uh, I don't know. And then in the final scene, there's like, an, I don't know if it's the antagonist or if it's just another enemy, but he had an outfit which was like, you know, at least they covered up his fucking face because I didn't know who he was there. But it obviously was a cheaper suit, but 
I think it's kind of smart if you just had all the characters just not wearing suits. Like, just who cares? Suits are always just so cheap. In The Flash, it took them like seven seasons to get a good suit. And then you go and see a movie or a trailer for The Flash movie, and you immediately realize they're doing it better in the movie. So who, the, the, the suits on TV are always dog shit. Let's talk about our protagonist, Turner Hayes. There's good and bad things about this guy, and especially the execution of his character. Right now, I feel like his biggest flaw is just the pacing of the show. It kind of makes it hard to understand what he's going through. I mean, they're trying to show scenes where he's grieving, but they're not very relatable because you don't really care about who he's grieving about because they don't want to show that character. It's also as if he gets over that very quickly, but they do kind of implement a few scenes later on where you realize that most of the show is going to be about him figuring out who his father really was as Batman. Um, and also how he's going to be talking to people who knew Batman, but he's not going to really know, like, that side of his dad. So it's going to make some interesting dialogue, but I'm pretty sure they've already had the one good moment. So if they do it again and again, it might just come off as redundant, um, which I hope they don't do, but they probably fucking will because there's some terrible dialogue in this show. Like, I would say most of it was bad. The thing is, if we actually knew who Bruce Wayne was in this show, we would be in the protagonist's shoes throughout the entire journey because like as he's learning about who Batman is who's obviously Bruce Wayne we'll also be learning how Bruce Wayne the character that say we had half an hour to an hour to digest who that character is we'd be slowly learning how he's a very different person to what we saw on screen that character dynamic doesn't exist and at this portion of the show we haven't really learned who Turner is inside uh, except for one scene at the end of the episode which of course, they threw in a scene that like shows us that he is a good person inside. He has a moment where he doesn't want to be pointing guns at the cops. And so he does like a bit of a self selfless thing and lets the cops get the advantage on them because they don't want to be fucking killing people. We know that he's smart and we know that he resembles Bruce a bit. But when he throws this massive, like stupidly massive party, we question if he's going to be a brat or not. I actually think that was a pretty good scene because it's kind of like misdirection. They give us a scene to think that he might be a bad person or just a dumb person or even just an irresponsible person, but that's just him being a kid and it's just going to show us that throughout the show he's going to be making mistakes and progressively learning so that he's not just immediately perfect because no one likes a character that's perfect from the first episode. For a majority of the episode, he's a bit bland, but he does have potential and that's all that matters. Okay, the supporting cast... Probably the weakest link in the show. We're introduced to the trio. The trio is a girl, a boy, and the Joker's daughter. First, the Joker's daughter was just cringe. Um, but I guess once you find out that she's the Joker's daughter, you're able to, you know, you're able to understand why they're gonna say some cringy shit. Because it's like it's the CW trying to write a Jokerish character, so they're obviously gonna be making some of the scenes even cringier than they have to be. That's just going to happen. There's a really humane scene at the end of the episode where, you know, like I said before, Turner, he's, he doesn't want to shoot the cops. He doesn't want to point a gun at them. And so he's kind of convincing the Joker's daughter to do, to not fucking shoot them. So you can tell that she's obviously not the Joker. She's very different. And at the very end of the episode, there's some decent dialogue when she's talking about the Court of Owls. So she, she'll be an important asset to their team, I guess. But those other two in the trio... The backstory was completely bland, and it felt like just exposition that was forced into this police interrogation. They heavily force that the one girl is gay, and then they heavily force like that the guy is trans. I just think that they could have established these characters and given them a personality before they did that, and then probably just never even touch on it, because you don't need the character to outwardly be gay or outwardly be trans for you to understand that their fucking person like I don't know that's not their personality I don't want to only see that I want to see other stuff that they're doing um it's just very it's very stupid and I'll touch on it more later conclusion of this episode I think that the show might just end up being uh, a show that's narrowly trying to avoid making obvious mistake and just basic mistakes which is kind of a bad thing because it might just end up being extremely boring and making very safe choices I do want to mention that they've set up a villain that was able to take down Batman, which means that the five kids that are going to try and take them down are going to have to, they're going to have to take down some something that Batman couldn't have. These five kids are inferior, 
or extremely inferior to Batman. Right now, it's basically extremely unbelievable that they'll be able to do this. They handled themselves fairly well in some earlier fights, but those are street level fighting. They're going against people who you need like Ra's al Ghul level of fighting skills to defeat. That's like the whole point of the of the enemy. And that's the whole point of Batman. He has such insane fighting skills that you need to be trained by like a sensei to know how to beat him or to even be on par with him in a fist fight. So it's very unbelievable that these kids who have what, like they can only street fight, they're going to have to beat Ra's al Ghul or something. Like it just doesn't really make sense. And one last thing, I'll touch on the, the trans character and the gay character, which at the end of the episode, I didn't mind them at all. Uh, they're just, they don't have anything good about them. They, they don't really have anything negative or shitty about them. Just boring at the moment. Um, which is always going to happen if you just force a character's sexuality or something that's irrelevant because no one cares uh, instead of their personality and who they actually are as a person. I think it's a tone-deaf mistake. And I say it's a tone-deaf mistake because right now in this era of fucking... TV shows, we don't need to say that this person's gay and that this person's trans. We just need characters that need to act like actual people. And then you can throw in their sexuality and just have it not matter because that's not who they are. You just focus on their personality. The whole Bill and Frank from The Last of Us was the perfect, literal perfect example. They just have an episode about themselves and that's good writing. It was just so forced in that episode because before you're even digesting who this character is, you're, you're just told first that they're trans. No one needed to know that. You could have gone the entire show without mentioning it. Some I didn't even realize that they were. But whatever. It's this moment where the both both of the characters are trying to ex basically, without saying it, explain their that they have a hard life or a hard backstory. And it's like, okay, yeah, I get you have a you have a hard life like every fucking person in Gotham. But then for no reason they just throw in the sexuality part. The best character, in my opinion, is probably going to be Robin, uh, because she actually just made sense to be a Robin. Like her personality seemed like the classic. You know, Batman's obviously stoic, but his um, contrast is Robin, who's uh, deep down just like Batman or whatever. But you know, she seems like she actually is acting like a Robin, so that was cool. I think the Turner and the Joker's daughter are going to be decent characters, and then the other characters, I don't, I don't know, no opinion. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I feel like I've talked about this show for way too long, bro. But anyway, peace.